Good afternoon, everyone. This is Saida, and we are back again. And today we are talking about something which is very commonly asked. And uh, being in this career for more than 15 years, I have been asked every second day about it. And it's all about building permits, construction permits, um, extension permit and all. We always want to extend our house, have a bigger houses. And there are so many questions regarding it. And for that, we have invited Ankita Rao from Freeline Engineering Consultant, who worked closely with us for many approvals and permits. And just now, one of the projects is in pipeline. So Ankita, thank you very much for your time and um, glad to have you here. Hi, Saida. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Ankita, tell me about yourself, uh, what you have been doing from your personal life, and then we will take it to your um, uh, professional life. Sure. So I'm actually a Dubai kid. I grew up here. I've been here almost 30 years. And uh, uh, I'm an architect by profession. Can you hear me? I think it got muted. Yeah. So I'm an architect uh, by profession. I studied in the US. I did my undergraduate and master's. I was also working there. I was there for almost six years and then I moved back to Dubai. Freeline Engineering is actually a um, family business. So I am second generation in the company. My brother and I, we co-manage this business. So it's almost like 23 years old. So this is in a nutshell about me, uh, my journey in Dubai. I've been here, like I said, 30 years. So I'm quite, you know, Dubai is home for all of us. <laughs> yeah, many of us. So yeah. tell me about your company. What, what kind of project do you take on and do the consultancy? Yeah, so we are uh, main consultants as Freeline Engineering Consultants. And uh, in, in, uh, within the line of uh, construction, we do everything from an empty plot to modifications. We have a ground plus four license category. So what that means is we can uh, do design buildings from empty plots all the way up to ground plus four floors. We do get special approval to take up to design G plus six as well. So within the company, uh, we have all our team members in house. So we do one part of it, which is architecture and space planning. We have a second yeah. part of it, which is detailed engineering design, which is your structure, which is your AC designs, which is your drainage, firefighting design and mm -hmm. electrical designs. So this we do across various projects from homes to schools, to warehouses, to buildings, et cetera. Okay. So in a nutshell, we have, and as a company, we are 23 years old. Like I mentioned, we are a family owned business. So my brother and I, we co-manage the business right now. My brother's also a, a, he's a business graduate, also studied in the US, economics and business graduate. So we both manage two very different verticals of uh, the business. Okay, so good to know that uh, it's a family business and brother and sister together are running it. So it's always good to know. So I find that family businesses together work and deliver quite better. Uh, I don't know, it's my understanding. So I also work in a family business and I feel like it has more connection. It is, it is more easy to work together. Yeah, I think as siblings, it's easier because you know, you uh... you are muted. Um, you know, you know each other really well. You know the working styles really well. So I think in our case, we are just plain lucky that we uh, complement each other in a very good way. And I think even the, you know, where areas where we don't agree, I think we're able to reach a consensus very quickly in terms of decision making. You know, that always happens, right, with siblings. It happens. Uh, you know, you always have, happens. Yeah, Fine. areas and... <laughs> Yeah, and the thing is, both my brother and I, we independently manage, the, we've been managing the business for about eight years. So uh, my uncle who started this company is no more, actually he passed away uh, to cancer. So my parents are in their own line of work. So we are a joint family. So only my brother and I, we co-manage the business now. So it's just us as decision makers. But yeah, like I said, you know, with siblings, it always comes in, something or the other always comes in, right? Exactly. So whereas I have been working with Ankita and I have known her for quite some time and uh, I never heard, I never knew about your brother because uh, dealing with Ankita was one window, one stop for me yeah. and it was very easy. I never knew about it. It's good to know all the time. Yeah. And these 
Facebook lives are very helpful for us. So let's yeah. come back to the discussion. And today yeah. we are talking about most sought after uh, topic, and it is all about building and extending our houses. Yes. So I always start with a small space, a small houses like apartments. So sometimes people living in apartment, they want to extend uh, and use their yeah. balcony. Is it allowed? It depends from developer to developer, honestly. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a case by case scene, to be honest. So the and, and if you're the owner of uh, apartment, then it is uh, or if you're renting it, it depends if you're renting it, your, you know, landlord needs to give you permission. But if it's your own apartment, which I'm assuming it depends honestly on, on the area. But uh, in most cases, they will not allow it because you know it spoils the elevation you can't just enclose one balcony where all the other balconies are open and also mm -hmm. what happens is when we design buildings there is a very strict um, area restriction that is there in the design factor for example you know we call this far floor area ratio so you're only allowed to build a certain percentage of the plot area as built up area. So when you enclose a balcony, you're adding to the built up area. So in most likelihood, the developers may not allow it. But again, this is a case by case. I'm just giving you a broad perspective from a design standpoint. Yeah, I have seen someone who has done the balcony covered in JVC and it was a glass uh, coverage, mm -hmm. but it was done. I don't know. It was... Uh, it is easy to get the permission everywhere or like you said it's a little bit difficult to get the permission yeah it's a case by case scenario some developers may allow it uh, some developers may not allow it and uh, you know as a general uh, rule of thumb the developer is the first authority that will whether it's miras whether it is imar whether it's nakil to buy properties you know we first need to check with the developer whether they will allow it and then we move to the government permits. Okay, so uh, talking about interior, changing an interior, knocking down a wall, it doesn't need any permit. Does it need any permit from the authorities? Actually, it does because you know a lot of times interior walls are uh, may be structural walls. Sometimes the interior walls may be a wall which is concealing some sort of uh, sewerage lines or AC ducting. So it's always better to consult. A consultant like us, for example, we get a lot of these inquiries where someone wants to modify the internal areas of their villa and things like that. So it's very important for us to study which wall you are, because as from outside, you almost always cannot tell what is behind the wall. Sometimes right. it is a structure that is concealed in the wall. So you cannot tell. Also, the type of construction matters, you know, like in Arabian ranches, for example, a lot of villas are made out of what we call a precast construction. So those are very, very difficult to touch in terms of structure. So it's always better to consult before you go ahead and make any revisions to any internal modifications. So do you want people to reach you with the drawings, approved drawings? either that or we also have a process where we can get the approved drawings from any authority there is a nominal fee that the authorities charge yeah. so uh you know so we can get the approved drawings it's always better to get the approved drawings from the government if you if your developer is not giving it to you or they don't have a copy then we mm -hmm. can just the ideal process is for us to then study your existing site along or your villa or your building along with the approved drawings and then see what has what is matching not matching okay. and then take it from there so uh, talking about the interior layout people really want to change the interiors of their house and uh, like you said that they might need to uh, go through the authorities and get it, get it checked uh, from people like yours that if it is viable to do that kind of changes so uh, like I said, once again, people here wants to extend the maid's room. Sometimes they want to extend the dining room. So uh, then these are the commonly done interior changes. Yeah. So they need, to, they need to evaluate first. They need to get consultants, not a technical company or a plumber yes. to assess this. So yes. what do you say about that? 
Yeah, actually, these are very common uh, extensions like you mentioned. So we also get inquiries where people want to extend the ground floor, uh, you know, living room or they want to extend ground floor dining area or kitchen or they have a courtyard. They want to enclose the courtyard or they, you know, by default, when they do that, they get additional area on the first floor. We also get inquiries where the first floor has an opening of some sort, like your main entrance. For example, it's double height. They want to close that. So in all these cases, is you first need a consultant like us because uh, the uh, firstly we need to study all the engineering first before we all the engineering uh, disciplines before we even start uh, sketching whether this is possible or not you know for example when you're uh, extending a villa uh, like your living room it seems it may seem very simple but the thing is it needs to be checked thoroughly whether the structure is able to support the new structure, whether we need to propose a completely new standalone structure, or whether there are natural light that is conflicting because as per authority regulations and developer regulations, these are things we need to take care of. So the first step, of course, is to appoint a consultant like us to first come in, do a site visit, understand what your requirements are. There are times when we can... You are muted. Yeah, I said there are times when we can maybe give you better ideas, better solutions on how you can best utilize the space, how you can uh, get additional space. And like I said, authority uh, developer wise, it is developer to developer, they have different regulations, for example, even EMAR within all their various properties, uh, the, the regulations vary. So we will be the best people to guide you on how much area you can get you know, to what extent uh, you can pull your uh, extension and, uh, you know, how you can, how we can help you best. So we are as consultants, but this is, this is what we do. So that is the first step. Second step is for us to approach the developer, take the approval. And uh, third step is for us to make all the detailed drawings for your required modification. Fourth step is to take a permit. Fifth step is to appoint the contractor and get the work done. So when the contractor is doing his work also, we have to be present on site when key uh, elements are being casted. For example, when you're casting the extended floor slab, roof slab, yeah. etc. Yeah. We are present and we organize for uh, government inspections. This is a standard procedure. And then we are our services will end when the completion is taken. So when the project is completed, this is specific to extensions. But this is the process we follow, even if it is a new project. Right. So uh, Maya, thank you very much, Maya. Thank you, Moin, for watching this. Uh, Maya uh, has a question and she yes. is saying, my villa, my villa, my villa has uh, cracks. And uh, I feel like it can uh, it can fall anytime. So, do you do such kind of uh, checks? Such no, actually, ideas? that is a very very specialized uh, sort of checking uh, that needs to be done. And there is a lot of investigation that needs to be done in terms of you know what is uh, you know how old the villa is and why there are cracks, etc. So, there are very specialized companies that do this snagging. Okay, so it's snagging you. It's, it's snagging is something that you don't do. Okay, we we so, do it uh, for new construction and sometimes, but in this, in her case, it's a very very uh, specialized uh, specialized thing because the villa has cracks in it. It's very specialized. Right. So another question is uh, many times we just did one villa and it was a villa con uh, extension and one Emirati she wanted to have extension for her majlis. And there were some rules related to the boundary wall. What are those rules, which are very commonly asked? Yeah, actually, the boundary wall rules, like I said, you know, these are uh, this varies from developer to developer. So sometimes some developers will not allow you to exceed boundary wall heights. Some developers are okay with it, and depending on where the majlis is, you know, some you know, uh, in in very areas where you have luxury villas, sometimes if you are exceeding the heights, you may need to take a neighbor NOC. So, like I said, this is developer to developer. So, depending on what area uh, the villa is in, you know, we can guide on. It's a case by case basis. Okay. So let's talk about villa exterior again. It is very commonly asked to change the color code of the villa. 
So if you are going to the villa, they want to get rid of the beige color. They want to go with whites or grays. So how to do that? So again, the villa is, uh, they have very specific requirements in terms of look and feel and not just the villa, I think almost all authorities have, uh, developers have their own codes they want to maintain, most of them want to maintain a certain look and feel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the yeah, so the process is again the same. We have to take a developer approval in case we're doing one villa in Emirates Hills where we're doing this, where the villa has been built in a Arabic style. So the owner wants to change it to completely modern style because you may be aware earlier Emirates Hills, they were, uh, this was one of the regulations they wanted, uh, you know, a page and a certain style. Mm -hmm. And right. now this, this, this uh, gentleman wants to change his villa to a completely modern concrete finish and with wood fins and things like that. So uh, the process is the same. So we have to first understand the requirements, check the feasibility check the authority regulations, whether the developer will allow something like this, then approach the developer with relevant drawings, 3Ds, photographs, design intent, and then take it from there. Okay, so the, for the color code even, it is the same procedure. Same process, so any procedure? modification. Yeah, any modification that needs to be done in a villa, whether you're changing the size of the windows, you're changing the height of the windows, height of the doors. Some people want to change main doors. That also happens many times. Uh, you know, some villa owner, especially when you're changing villas, you bought a new villa, you want to do modifications in, you know, change the doors, make them higher, make them wider. It's the same process because we have to see what are the impacts of these changes first in the existing villa and then guide from there because sometimes some villas are very, very old. So mm -hmm. in those cases, then we don't recommend touching the villas, even the government uh, and the approvals wise, it's very challenging. They don't recommend touching the existing structures. It may not be safe for us to demolish anything. So in all cases, it's very important uh, to first understand the existing structure. Okay, another question is something which we were supposed to talk and it's about swimming pools. So they want to have yes. the swimming pool and yes. uh, they they want to have not a casted swimming pool, they want to dig and do a proper swimming pool. So what are the permits involved? Yes, so uh, the swimming pool approval, there are uh, two stages of approval, again, depending on where your villa is located. Uh, but the pool approval is has a structural impact on it as well as an environmental impact. So there are two approvals, one from Dubai municipality. And if your plot is in uh, DDA, then DDA approval. If your plot is only Dubai municipality, then that approval. So depending on the location of your plot, it's actually a very simple approval to take. Uh, so we can definitely help with that. Your swimming pool develop, uh, whoever is designing your pool has to just submit to us the detailed drawings for the pool. And then we can help with the approvals for that. Okay, and uh, then again, another question. And Kita, you are getting so many questions. So another question is, can I hire any company for the villa extension? It's not recommended that you hire any company because like I said, you know, the you it's better to hire specialists. Uh, and if you're hiring a consultant like us, we also work with a lot of uh, contractors, etc. So we can put together a team for you. It's better that you hire somebody like us as engineering consultants because it's very important to check the structure, very, very important before you plan for any extension. Yeah, so viewers, uh, same is happening in one of the projects where they want to hire a contractor and the contractor they hired is not approved contractor. Yeah. And now they, they, they have got the permit in the system, but the contractor is not approved and the project is stopped. So yes, it is very, very important to check while recruiting any contractor on your site, whether they are approved from DDA or any other DM uh, or any other municipality, whoever are involved. If not, then there are high chances that your project is stopped. Yeah, because in our case, we are registered across all the authorities. And like you mentioned, you know, the the developers also, they require somebody like us to start with the process of uh, submitting to them. So we had another villa mm -hmm. that we were working on in Dubai Hills where they were misinformed. Um, and, uh, you know, so that they also got uh, stuck a little bit in terms of approvals. So it's, this happens very commonly. 
uh, it's very important to hire a consultant somebody like us who would come in and uh, start and because we know the uh, procedures we know the codes we know the regulations and like i said sometimes we may be able to give you better ideas than what you already have uh, you know in terms of your extensions just right. because of the length and breadth of projects that we are seeing right um there there is another thing that uh, one of the i think i spoke to you and discussed the project with you uh, somebody put the pota cabin inside their villa yes is it, is it le legal to have the pota cabin and no, no. inside the villa pota okay. cabins are not allowed at all uh, in in and you don't get any approvals for them across any authority so what if they put it and set it up and they get to know that it is uh, wrong so they have to just demolish everything get rid of it yes Continue. yes i think with anything because you know we've had cases where in villas uh, you know some tenants have or some owners or inhabitants have just done some extensions which were not which they wanted they got fined for and then they wanted to take approvals for it and the and the authority said no we cannot give you the approval so they had to demolish it so like i said you know they did it on their own i think they hired some carpenter or somebody and just got it made some extension so it's always better uh, you know to check whether something can be done or not because all the extents of extensions or modifications etc is very developer specific and like i said you know even with a developer like emart they have different regulations across various properties of theirs so we are working with almost all their properties or you know we're working with a length and breadth of uh, developers so we are aware of all the regulations so we'll be better equipped to guide you on whatever even if you want to add for example a gazebo in uh, the facility you want to add a gazebo in your uh, landscaping area you want to add pergola in your landscaping area so these are things we very commonly add or a pool like somebody was asking you know these are things we very commonly keep adding and seeing villas have so we are happy to assist with the approvals process and you know guide them on the the entire process okay um, another thing which uh, is commonly misled and it is about the security deposit to the developer is it something essential that uh, uh, while doing the extension or some work we have to pay the security deposit yeah yeah so some like i said again this is also developer specific so some developers ask uh, for a refundable deposit some developers it's non refundable but in most cases uh, you know the de the the de deposit is uh, refundable wherein you can go in and uh, after the completion is done you can claim the deposit but they will tell you up front whether it's a, de a refundable or non refundable deposit this is when we go for approvals at that point you will get you will get to know so uh, is it if it is something to do interior changes even the ripping of the tiles and putting it does it is still needed it depends on the finishes if you're only changing finishes again like i said this is very developer specific uh, because also you know if you're going in a gated communities then you're taking out tiles you're also you will need a you know a bigger a uh, vehicle to come in and because it can't be just taken in a car you know tiles and things you have company uh, you know either a contracting or a fit out or a carpentry company that will come and do it uh, but these are also so finishes don't really need approvals like if you're just changing tiles or if you're just changing to a carpet or a floor just flooring alone or you want to change your wallpaper or change your paint those are internally uh those don't necessarily need approvals but you may need approvals from your gated community so your gated community themselves will guide you on what the approvals are required in this in this uh, case because you may need a gate pass and things like that so yeah so noc from the landlord and this and yes. the other and then you have yes. to make a point yes so one thing uh, just while talking to you i just realized i should ask you maybe you can help me about the insurance is it required by the government to insure the project or the project uh, uh, should we add the insurance part from the company from the contractor part uh i'm not sure what insurance i'm not aware of uh, insurance yeah, okay. what worker insurance like professional the indemnity yeah you're talking yeah. about professional indemnity yes. yeah so professional indemnity i think we all have so we have uh, professional indemnity the contractors usually have their own professional yeah. indemnity 
yeah okay so is it really required or it's something that we it's we can escape? it's an industry practice it's an industry practice okay so um ankita there is another question and uh, that they ask about the pergola so pergola if you are building it inside the landscape so whether it has to be like one meter away from the boundary wall there are some kind of the um restrictions so can you tell me more about that yeah so again with pergola it uh, is uh, specific to the areas and the developers so some developers will allow you to touch the boundary wall some developers will allow you to will ask you to keep a setback is it again with the with it is all dependent on with respect to the privacy of the neighbors as well and also the look and feel of the community so there's a certain look and feel that every community requires or has regulations towards so it fully depends also these pergolas it depends on what level you're putting them at whether you're extending it on the ground floor you're extending it sometimes you know some we received some inquiries where the pergolas are only on the balcony so they just want it on the balcony some some people want pergolas only above their car park some people want pergolas in as a part of a beautification of landscape so it's a case by case basis and it depends on the location of the pergola location of the villa so and what type of pergola like if you're extending it very long it needs to be an independent structure if you're extending it on the balcony sometimes we may be able to connect it to the existing structure so it depends yeah. on the location as well as it depends on the uh, developer uh, regulations as well so that we can assist size, and size, size as well it. yeah size as well case by case basis okay so if somebody wants to do some kind of extension let's say we are talking about one extension of a of a room so how many days it takes let's say springs it's a springs and uh, they want to extend one room to the to the boundary and have more space in it so how much does it take how much time does it take actually in springs they don't allow any extensions because okay. it is a townhouse style so it's very difficult for ema to give the approval for springs but just to uh, in an like like for example we'll take a community where an extension has to be done for say living room as well as yeah, a dining room for example mm -hmm. um so it takes uh, anywhere between uh, four to six weeks Ah, uh, to get the design done, approvals done, and then I think the construction, depending on the extent of the extension, can take mm -hmm. anywhere between three months to six months because um, it depends on to what extent. Whether it's only a ground only extension, whether it's a ground plus one extension, because if you are extending something, some a lot of villas we have seen have a balcony existing, so they want to enclose the area below the balcony, which is currently being used yeah. as a veranda or something like that. So yeah. then that is a little. a little bit easier to do because you already have the slab on top but sometimes you know you have a courtyard like some villas are in this u shape so you have the central area which is open so uh, you know some community uh, some owners want to enclose that so in which case we have to enclose it on three levels you have a ground floor you have a first floor and you have a yeah. roof so we have three yeah. slabs so in which case so on an average you can estimate up to 6 months and again it depends on the extent like you're extending living room or dining room or adding a washroom you know these things involve more drainage it will involve the ac it will involve additional electrical uh, points it will involve uh, structure of course so these are things that um, again we need to assess on a case by case but to give you a ballpark you can say anywhere between 2 to 3 months is your approvals time and anywhere between 3 to 6 months would be your construction time so a total of about 9 months is a good estimate to keep yeah but uh, this current project you did it in 5 days we got the permit in 5 days <laughs> so it yeah. was very good and smooth yeah we have all the documents ready we knew that yes. what are the documents and uh, we worked with your team and it was very pretty fast and straight forward thank you so yes so uh, views this is all about uh, ankita and her company and if you have any questions regarding um, the consultancy and if you are planning to build a villa extend extend uh, do the extension do the interior layout changes that may include the structural changes um this is the right guide and um, i hope this uh, interview with ankita this is very exclusive for this group members um helped us 
all of us to learn more about the proce procedures. Um, and Kita, in the last, uh, I ask, always ask, and it's a surprise question. Uh, is there anything, any discount or any free consultation that you want to give it to the exclusive member of this group? Sure. So we can offer like a free site visit uh, to come in and assess your, um, you know, your villa, whatever you may have, even that lady who had uh, asked you about the cracks, uh, you know, where I, I can, you know, because the team that we have is extremely experienced. So the site engineer that we have, he's been with the company since the company started. So he's been with us for 23 years. We also have a senior architect who's been with us for 23 years since the company started. And right. um, that's one of our core values. We try to retain good talent. Uh, so we are happy to come in and offer a free site visit uh, where we come in and we check the feasibility of the extensions, feasibility of whatever you wanted to, uh, you know, make or change or modify, we're happy to come in and do that. Okay, thank you very much, Ankita. Yes, we, are, uh, we have been, it was a pleasure working with the Freeline Engineering. Everything was done uh, so easily and very smooth. We didn't have to chase. In fact, they were chasing me <laughs> all the time for, for the documents, but yes, all proactively done. And uh, that's why I thought to bring Ankita here because I always find one stop solution for all the questions related to the extensions. So, uh, so many times we get so many inquiries really, uh, regarding the extensions and all. And sometimes I feel like I need to get back to them with more knowledge, more, more information. So thank you very much, uh, Ankita, for enlightening us for all the details about and taking out your time. I know today was your busiest day <laughs> of the week, no, I, but no, you I took out the time for us. No, thank you so much. And we're happy to address any concerns. Uh, you know, if anyone wants to even have a chat, uh, you know, I'm happy to just talk to them and guide them through the process. So thank you, Saida. Thank you for having me. It's uh, very kind of you to have me and uh, for this chat. Thank you for your time as well and arranging this so effortlessly. Uh, thank you to all the members who tuned in. Thank you so much for your questions thank and you uh, for your time. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And Ankita is a group member, so feel free to get in touch with her. So she is a group member and she can always answer the questions. Thank you very much, Ankita, for your time. See thank you, you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.